Hello, should you get computer slash gaming glasses? Is there science behind them? What is the difference between screen glasses and gaming glasses? What are my subjective findings? All of these will be answered in today's review of Spy's Happy Lenses, specifically their Crossway Happy Screens and Monolith Happy Gaming Lenses. So let's get nerdy. If you want to skip directly to the review, go to the timestamp on the screen. Otherwise, we are going to start off with the science, as I personally don't like being had. I don't know about you. So I wanted to see what the science had to say, and I figured that was a great way to do this review. As if I'm going off the marketing for blue light, it can be so harmful that I'm going to go blind, never to play video games or see my loved ones again. But the only, and I mean the only way, to save my beautiful, wonderful eyesight is to buy expensive blue light gaming glasses and sell my first child. Because you love your family, right? Right? Okay, maybe not that first child, but the rest of them. Ends up, gaming slash screen glasses are beneficial, but not in the ways I was led to believe. Before we get into it, remember, I'm just some dude on the internet with no initials before or after my name. I looked the wrong way there, but that's okay. So fact check yourself before you wreck yourself. The visible spectrum of light is believed to be between 380 and 700 nanometers. The light we will be focusing on today is ultraviolet or UV light and high energy visible light, AKA HEV or blue light. Ultraviolet light is invisible to the human eye and is between 100 and 300 nanometers in range. It has short wavelengths and high amounts of energy, which makes it harmful not only to your eyes, but also to your skin. Most UV light comes from the sun, but can also come from electronics such as fluorescence, high energy mercury vapor lamps, and some older screens. As most new screens no longer produce UV light, but that can be hit or miss. Some benefits of UV are the ability to clean germs off surfaces and help produce vitamin D, which helps regulate calcium and phosphate, which is needed to keep bones, teeth, and muscles healthy. Some say this is critical to well-being. I say nay. Mountain Dew and Doritos does the same exact thing and is far more enjoyable. It can also give you a suntan if you can call that a positive. Personally, I like being so white that I reflect light, but to each his own. As for the negatives, UV light is thought to be cumulative, meaning the more you're exposed to it, the worse it gets. This can lead to sunburns, which hurt and also later in life can lead to same cancer and cause you to age prematurely making you look older than you actually are, and nobody wants that. It can also cause photokeratitis, aka snow blindness or sunburned eyes, which sounds absolutely horrible. As for macular degeneration, the research is hit and miss. I'm going to say they are definitely undecided, but they have seen it increase the chance of developing cataracts, which requires surgery to remove and also causes some temporary blindness. That's a whole nother thing, but anyways. You don't want cataracts either, which to me means the more you can protect your eyes, the better. The powers of B recommend wearing sunscreen, even when indoors, to prevent damage to your skin, which is a new one I did not know about, and to wear sunglasses, especially those that filter 100% of UV, when outside, and to actually wear gaming slash screen glasses indoors to block any artificial UV sources, but not is all lost, as there are structures in the front of the eye, the cornea and the lens, that can block 99% of UV radiation from reaching the retina and causing damage. However, UV light can still enter through the sides and cause damage. <gasps> Yikes. Thankfully, all happy gaming and screen lenses block 100% of UV light. Yes! Which brings us to the next spectrum known as HEV or blue light, which is thought to be dangerous. It sits between 380 and 500 nanometers. It takes up 30, yes, 30% of the visible light, and nearly all of it passes through the cornea and lens, allowing it to reach the retina. Sounds scary, right? Blue light comes from daylight, LEDs from computers, tablets, smartphones, lights, and other digital devices. This is the light that blue light filters, such as screen protectors, gaming slash screen glasses, and night mode on your devices are supposed to combat. But there is a lot of misconception here, and the research doesn't seem conclusive. The benefits of blue light include a boost to alertness, elevation in mood, and helps memory and cognitive functions, all of which I can definitely get down behind for sure, likely due to some association with the neurobiological mechanism that activates the right amygdala and left dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, which is associated with said mood and alertness. <laughs> Sounded real smart right there. <laughs> kind of happy about how I pronounced that pretty right and my enunciation <laughs> was right on the money. This is why certain wavelengths of blue light are used to treat seasonal affective disorder, aka SAD, which is a depression that can occur during the fall and winter, as there is less sunlight during those times, which can lead to chemical imbalances in the brain to those that 
it affects. Some negatives that have been proven are that it can cause eye strain, which is usually between the 380 and 450 nanometer range, and disrupt your circadian rhythm, which is thought to be your natural sleep cycle, which is usually that blue light that affects that is usually between 450 and 500 nanometers. So pay attention to those nanometer ranges as they're about to become important here in a minute. However, these negative effects don't seem to affect everyone, with some people being a lot more sensitive to them than others, and some of them not being affected at, by it at all. Research on macular degeneration is hit or miss, where some studies show there is a correlation between an increased risk of age-related macular degeneration to those who are already predisposed, along with progressive disease diseases such as Stargardt disease. I don't see the relation here. Again, I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but I do know that correlation doesn't mean causation. What makes this even more frustrating is there are other research that shows there is no relation. So we are left perplexed. Does it cause damage? Does it or not? Nobody knows and further research is still needed. Also, the sun causes the most amount of blue light, but you don't peop see people like running down people who work in the sun all day and being like, you need to wear sunglasses or you're going to go blind. And a lot of those people don't wear sunglasses and have good vision into their older age. So it's also kind of one of those like, OK, so why are you saying my screen, which provides way less blue light than just normal outdoors? So you see the problem, right? Just a lot of misinformation. Blue light, however, does cause eye strain because blue light scatters easily when it strikes air and water molecules, which is why the sky is blue. Who knew? I certainly didn't before this review. With blue light scattering easily, our eyes need to work harder on focusing on it, which over time causes our eyes to tire out. There are several ways to help alleviate eye fatigue and dryness as well. The first is the 20-20-20 rule, where every 20 minutes you look 20 feet away for 20 seconds. The second is to turn your screen to a warmer color or use night mode. The third is to buy screen covers for your devices. And the fourth is to get blue light glasses. The issue with 2020 or 20 rule is if you work in a closet or in a flow state, that doesn't work because you forget to look up or away from your work. Or for me, my 20 feet, I don't have 20 feet in front of me. Turning your screen to a warmer color ruins color accuracy, which I'm personally not a fan of. Screen covers work similarly to blue light glasses, but only protect you from that device, and you don't know how much or what range they cover, which is why I like blue light glasses the best, as it is the best of all worlds. You can still do the 20-20-20 rule when you remember. You don't have to change the color accuracy of your screen, and it works on all sources of blue light while still protecting you from all UV light. Since this is a collaboration, I was able to get a, a bit more information about spies happy lenses. Maddie, I do appreciate your hard work. They report their happy screen lenses block 54% of harmful shortwave blue light and their happy gaming lenses block 78% of all blue light. By the way, their screen glasses are going to be clear and then their gaming ones are going to be the ones that are actually kind of amber. It's kind of hard to see on my screen, which they and by they, I mean SPY, has found to be the most critical range to reduce eye fatigue and promote healthier sleep. Additionally, research has shown that lenses that block blue light between 400 and 450 nanometers, which is thought to be the unhealthy bad blue light, wavelengths also allow healthy blue light through, which is thought to be between the 450 and 500 nanometer range, giving you a boost to alertness, memory, cognitive functions, and mood while reducing eye strain and increasing contrast, which means wins for freaking everyone, which I love, except for those who want to prevent disrupting their circadian rhythm, as the longer blue wave light is thought to wake you up and comes directly from the sun and tells our body that it's time to be active. At night, the sun goes away, but with artificial blue light, it continue, your body continues to get the message, making it difficult to fall asleep, which can lead to insomnia, daytime fatigue, and other health problems due to not getting enough sleep per night, not actually the blue light, but the blue light is kind of causing you to have those other things. So it's like what came first, the chicken or the egg? As contrary to popular belief, sleep is actually extremely critical to overall health. Who would have thought? But that's another subject entirely. There are specific glasses that block 100% of blue light, which would help prevent your disruption to your circadian rhythm. They're usually orange slash amber in color. But the glasses in this review do not, as far as I'm aware, prevent that from happening, even though they do say that it helps you prom promote healthier sleep. And I don't really get that because if they're letting the healthy blue light through that is supposed to energize you, couldn't that affect your circadian rhythm? I don't know. I'm confused as they report all of their happy lens tech is tuned to let good light, aka long wave blue light in the 450 to 500 
nanometer range through which boosts mood and focus, which makes me think that it doesn't block against disrupting your sleep, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. So we got pretty nerdy there. Basically, UV light is more dangerous than blue light. Evidence of blue light danger is still up in the air and appears to be secondary to lack of sleep and drying out the eye over harm directly from it. More research is still needed on this subject, but blue light can cause eye fatigue and disrupt your sleep pattern. Spy screen glasses block 53% of harmful blue light, while their gaming glasses block 78%. All happy lenses allow positive blue light through. All their lenses block 100% of UV, but don't combat against blue light affecting your circadian rhythm, to my other understanding. The dangerous shortwave blue light that causes eye fatigue is usually between 380 and 450 nanometers, with the positive long wave blue light being between 450 to 500 nanometers. Got any questions? The comment sections got you, so let me know down below. Which brings us to the review portion. Well, Spy was generous enough to send me out two of their Happy Lens glasses, one for screens and the other for gaming, but the question that I had was what is the difference between the two and which one should I buy? Which is why I wanted to provide the research as my subjective findings aren't really worth anything. It appears that both their happy screen, which are these guys, and happy gaming, which are these guys, lenses reduce eye fatigue while letting the energizing effects of blue light through with the happy screens blocking 53% of the harmful blue light and the happy gaming blocking 78%. The happy gaming also have an amber tint to help boost contrast, which I personally didn't see a huge boost with, but to each his own, I'd also argue with their gaming glasses that since it blocks more blue light, it will disrupt your sleep pattern less. So if you're going to try to go for minimal disruption of said sleep, I recommend wearing these at nighttime, meaning the difference between them is definitely very minimal. It mainly comes down to do you want a color shift clear versus amber? which may or may not add more contrast. And do you want to block more or less blue light? The screen first gaming, which may reduce the positive effects of blue light, but also combat circadian rhythm sleep disruption with the one that blocks more. But why spy over other glasses? <laughs> Great question. I'm really happy that you asked that. They all come with happy screen tech, which enhances color, contrast, and clarity, likely from their anti-reflective coating blocking specific blue light. More on that in a bit. This happy screen tech allows good rays, which is specific long wave blue light, while blocking bad rays, UV and short wave blue light, which help improve mood and alertness while reducing eye strain while blocking 100% of UV. The science we look at report all of this to be scientifically sound. You also know it blocks 53% or 78% of harmful blue light, depending on which lenses you get. Finding a specific percentage with other brands will likely be difficult, or they may block all blue light, making it so you don't get the beneficial blue light. They all come with optical class one spy accurate radius curvature arc lenses, which sound fancy AF, but all that means is that these lenses are very clear, allowing you to easily see text and images without any issues all day long. Well, while being tempered to the normal curvature of your eye, you can see that curvature by looking at the lens. But most importantly, it makes them a lot more comfortable to wear as your eyes don't have to work as hard when looking around when wearing them, your eye bell also never meets the lens. It naturally cuts down on glare by reducing the angles, light and reflections can hit your eye from all angles. They also added reflective coating to the side the of this side of the lens instead of this side of the lens, which is critical as with my old gunner glasses, they didn't come with this and I could see my eyeball and everything behind me when I was gaming, which was super frustrating and very, very distracting. Seriously, you want anti-reflective coating. This could be improved now as I bought those Gunner gaming glasses over five years ago. So I do my more research if you're looking into those. But the specific model that I got all a long time ago was not very good. I believe this anti-reflective coating and arc lenses is where they get the enhanced color and contrast and clarity claims from as when compared to an environment where glare and reflections are present. If you remove that, it would be true. But I think there's a bit of stretching of the truth here where if you were comparing glasses without the arc lenses and anti-reflective coating to those that had it in an environment without glare or reflections, they would look exactly the same, which means the color contrast and clarity wise would probably be a wash. 
but reflections and glare are everywhere so you'd still want the fancier pair because that will still improve your overall enjoyment of them. For those of you environmentally friendly, all frames are made with 50% organic plant matter, making them lightweight, durable, and reduces plastic consumption. The Crossway, which are these guys, Bewilder and Boundless are made from bioplastic, where the Monolith, which are these guys right here, Cyrus and Discord are made from nearly indestructible Grylamid frame material, which means you can throw your glasses across the room in a fit of rage, and at the very least, the frames should survive. I don't know about the lenses themselves, so I don't actually recommend doing that. They also come with high quality, long lasting pin hinges to withhold the test of time. The hinges on both glasses feel fantastic. They are stiff and don't wobble or give at all, which I really like. For some reason, the monolith also comes with a scoop vent for increased airflow. I'm not sure what the point of this is, I guess to prevent fogging. Um, what? I have so many questions, but this review is already far too long. This brings me to my subjective findings. These glasses feel well built and are very comfortable. I am able to wear them all day long without any issues. I find the lenses don't get terribly dirty, but I do end up having to clean them on a regular basis, as I don't think that they have any anti-oil coating so it can build up easily. The microfiber cloth that comes with them makes it easy to clean. However, I don't think that they realize that gamers wear headphones when gaming, as all of their frames are rather thick on both ends, making them semi uncomfortable depending on the headset you are wearing. I also found the frames they had on selection were limited in appearance and were a particular style, none of which really fit me. It's hard to tell here, but the screen lenses have a bit of a darker tint to them, which makes things mildly darker, while the gaming glasses have an orange slash yellow tint, which changes everything to be warmer. I found that the screen glasses were a bit more comfortable as they're just a little more low profile. And I like just the minimal frame design on these guys, but they make me look super nerdy where these ones just make me look like I'm about to go skiing. Or something. When wearing the screens, though, I can still see some of the frames in my peripheral vision and stuff like that. However, with the monolith, because these guys have absolute units of lenses going all the way around, I actually have full view of these, which makes me like these a little bit more just because the lens is so much larger. When it comes to color and contrast, I noticed a mild improvement with both glasses and a moderate improvement with eye fatigue. The difference between the happy screen and happy gaming is minimal, which makes me prefer the happy screen as that doesn't cause a color shift, but the massive lenses of the monolith is hard to give up. When it comes to my sleep, I haven't found either of them making it easier to fall asleep. However, I have noticed that I am getting better sleep by not waking up as often throughout the night when I do wear them before bed, but the difference between the happy gaming and happy screen is minimal here as well, but both are better than not wearing anything at all. I found that I prefer to use the happy screen during the day and then switch to the happy gaming at night, which helped me get to bed earlier as well because I felt tired sooner, but I've also been operating on slight sleep deprivation, which could also explain these findings. Last, when I put on the happy screen glasses after wearing them for a nice long period, I noticed an increase in my overall mood and sharpness of mind, which definitely Definitely, definitely makes me think I'm on crack. Seriously, if I heard some YouTuber say that, I'd be like, this dude is a shill. He's getting paid massive money to say this review, which is why I wanted to provide the science and objective findings way before I got to this as taking some random dude's subjective take on gaming slash green glasses isn't really worth all that much. But ends up my findings do line up with their claims of letting good blue light through, but I'm still not totally convinced this isn't placebo. It has to... it. It's, it's got to be placebo, but maybe without the glasses, I'm getting the good blue light, but also working harder due to it causing fatigue, where with the glasses, I get the good blue light without the fatigue. I don't know. If you get them, I'd love to see if you found similar results in the comment section below. So moving on to the conclusion, I have no idea why I still have my headset on. I think that I've proven that there are positive health perspectives of getting gaming slash screen glasses, specifically with combating eye fatigue. They also block 100% of UV light, which is the most dangerous light that you can see. Well, you can't see. So that's why it's important to 
do something to combat against them. With UV light being cumulative, the less exposure you have, the better, but the danger of blue light or lack thereof still needs further research to prove or disprove. So if you want to take every step to protect your eyes, experience eye fatigue, or something that may help circadian rhythm disruptions, then it's definitely a go. Going with slightly more expensive glasses like these also nets you other positives such as higher quality lenses with a bit more tech in them that are more comfortable and have better built frames, which means it really comes down to what you want. I know I certainly enjoyed them and believe if you pick them up that you will too. I will see you and your beautiful face on the next one. God bless and peace out.